How are we doing there boys and girls? Matthews here and welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about how the crafting system works and more importantly about how material and the, more importantly the material quality is going to affect the quality of your crafts. Not just the quality of your crafts today but how it's going to be affected in the future as well when people start recrafting on a regular basis. This is a bit of a hot topic of conversation right now. It's people are getting hold of their first, second spark. They're looking at getting a few bits of gear crafted and they're starting to wonder why they're seeing different results to either their friends, their guild mates, or just other people in general. And more importantly, crafters are wondering this. Crafters are actually starting to do a few recrafts here and there and some weird things seem to be happening and I want to try and hopefully take a few minutes out of your day to day to try and explain why those weird things are happening and what you can do to circumvent them and what the solution is to this. Now I know a lot of this may not make sense at this point but please stick with me. It's a little bit of a complicated system and I will try and explain it in as clear a fashion as possible hopefully. But let's see. Um, but materials, right? Materials matter. Let's say you're making a piece of gear nowadays. You, you've got your spark of ingenuity. You've put in a work order. You found somebody to craft you, yourself a piece of gear. I'm going to use the ring bound hourglass here as an example to begin with. Um, and you found a crafter that's pretty good at what they do. They've told you they can make a quality three, quality four, maybe even quality five, and you're happy with that. So what you do is you run off to the auction house, you grab yourself some materials to, to get that order replaced, um, and you see that there's a significant price difference between quality one, quality two, and quality three materials. It's human nature to try and save a buck here or there and lots of people are actually trying to use lower quality materials because they found a crafter that's good at what they do. And now this is not too problematic today but it's going to cause problems in the future uh, as just getting that piece of gear is only step one. We are in the very very early stages of Dragonflight right now and the way that the sort of methodology for crafting is is that you get a piece of gear crafted and you take it with you, you take it through the expansion. You use this recrafting system to give it back to a crafter from time to time to maybe adjust the secondary stats on it, maybe infuse it with power. Maybe you've been into uh, heroic or mythic difficulty content and you've got some optional reagents to bump its item level. To apply those, you're going to need to give it back to a crafter and have it recrafted. What's all this got to do with materials though? Well, there's a clever little system in the game where it kind of tries to remember what the materials were used when crafting the item. And this is going to massively affect how that item uh, is recrafted in the future. I've got to touch bases on a few basic things before we get too far. So our ring bound hourglass uh, has a recipe difficulty of 315. We, as a jewel crafter, I'm not particularly specced into rings. I've gone the prospecting route, but that's a topic for another day. I, as a jewel crafter, have a total right here right now of 162 skill, which indicates that I would make this ring-bound hourglass at quality three. Firstly, where do these skill points come from? What, what's happening here? Well, I've got, if you hover over it, you see 162, and then it's got 100 plus 62 in brackets. The 100 is your base skill in the profession. So you can see I've actually managed to max out Jewel Crafting by this point. I've got all 100 levels of Jewel Crafting done. Uh, so I'm gaining 100 base skill uh, just from having the profession maxed out. I'm then gaining 62. 62 is coming from two different places right now. 62 is made up of 22 points from these things, from your profession accessories and my profession tool, plus 10, plus six, and plus six is 22. The remaining 40 points is coming through my specialization trees. I've put a bunch of points in Jeweler's Toolset Mastery. Uh, for every point you put into this, you gain one skill, so a total of 30, plus some of these little nodes around the edge actually total up to an extra 10 points by the time you've filled it. So that's where the 40 comes from. Um, this will all start to make a little bit more sense in a minute, I, I, I promise. So 162 is our default skill. What we can work out from this is that we are gaining no bonus skill whatsoever from materials. Not a drop, not a single skill point is coming from the quality of the materials that we've used. Because as you can see, they're all quality one. They're all super duper mega basic ones. Skill matters 
and materials can account for an awful lot of the skill. Uh, for example, let me just throw it out there nice and quickly. Remember the number 25. 25% of the recipe difficulty can be done, instantly obtained. You can gain 25% of the difficulty if you use top quality materials. So if we look at 315, 315 is not a nice easy number uh, to work out what 25% of it is, but 315, uh, hang on, hang on, that's not 315, is it? 315 divided by four is the easy way to find out 25%. And we can work out that there's actually 78.75 skill points available if we use top quality materials. Add that to the 162 that we have right now, plus 162, and 240.75, which the game will round up to 241. If we click this button now, Boom, hey presto, you can see it goes up to 241 because we've chosen to use the best quality materials. Um, the reason why people are choosing not to do this though right now is because what you can actually see is the outcome is exactly the same. Here and now, today, if I'd have crafted it with top quality materials, I would probably still only be able to guarantee quality three. If I chose to use the basic quality materials, well, it's still guaranteed to be quality three. Uh, this is leading a lot of people to cheap out on the materials, use the basic stuff, um, because right here, right now, it doesn't make a difference, right? You still get your quality three piece of gear. This is going to have an impact though when we come to recraft in the future. And this is where I wanna start talking about a little blog post. In fact, it wasn't even a blog post. It was literally a reply in a, a bug report forum uh, by our fella, our friend Drew. He's one of the WoW developers that focuses on the professions. And he's, jumped, he's chimed in with a little bit of information about how the recrafting system is gonna work. And more importantly, why these materials matter. Um, with what we've discussed already, hopefully that will make this article or this post make a little bit more sense. So people were wondering why when they recraft something, why the skill is so very much varied. So I, I do a recraft for some person and the skill is really low. I do a recraft for somebody else and the skill was much higher. Why is that? And it's all because of these materials. So the way the system works is that the game or the item itself remembers the quality of the reagents that you use when you craft it in the first place. Um, let's say the original item can give you 100 skill from reagents. From what we talked about a minute ago, we understand that if you're gaining 100 skill from reagents, that's a, that means the recipe difficulty by default, our default recipe skill, uh, <laughs> our default recipe here was 315. Uh, it's assuming for the purpose of this example, it's 400. 400 would mean that you can gain 100 skill points from the reagents. In this world, if you craft with all quality three materials, you'll get that plus 100 skill bonus when crafting it. If you use all quality two, you would only get 50, 12.5%. Uh, uh, and if you use all quality one, you don't get any skill bonus to that craft whatsoever. So let's say you craft the item initially using only quality one reagents. You get zero skill uh, as a bonus when crafting that item, uh, very frequently being the situation, like I said here, especially when the outcome ends up being exactly the same. Um, so you craft a piece of gear using the cheap materials, you still get a reasonable piece of gear and you're happy, right? You go off. In the future though, when you go to recraft it, you're going to need to use quality three reagents when recrafting that piece of gear to boost up that skill. You can reclaim the fact that you didn't use top quality materials to begin with. You can start clawing back some of that bonus 100 skill that you could have had, but you didn't get to begin with. Now it's actually gonna take you three recrafts to achieve this. Uh, and there's some numbers here that will explain why it's really important to use quality three materials in the first place. Um, the first time you do a recraft using quality three reagents, you'll get plus 40 skill out of that possible 100. Uh, it's effectively replaced 40% of the old reagents with quality three ones. 
you recraft it again for a second time and you'll gain a plus 40 again. 40 plus 40 is 80. So you'll have clawed back 80 of that bonus skill achievable. Uh, and then when you finally do it for a third time, you'll get that last 20% of the quality one materials out of the way and everything will be, you know, you'll have got that full 100 skill bonus back, it, back, back uh, from what you could have had to begin with. This is all before you actually improve the quality of that item though. This is the important thing to understand is that you will need three recrafts of a single piece of gear to get it caught back up. And the reason I sort of want to point, a crowd, point out that this is super important is that later on down the line, when you start trying to customize the secondary stats, when you try to start using your primal infusions, your concentrated primal infusions, Every time you use a bonus item, it dramatically increases the difficulty of the, of the recipe for crafters. And whilst crafters today have enough skill points to not have to worry too much about that, when you try and get the item level 416, 418, the really top mythic item level pieces of gear being crafted, crafters are going to need every advantage that they can take to actually be able to physically make that piece of gear. And if you've used quality one materials in the first place, you're gonna have to recraft that piece of gear three times, which is gonna cost you yet more materials. Uh, it doesn't use as many materials when you recraft. You can see here that the uh, chronocloth gloves that the example is used here uses your spark of ingenuity and your primal chaos, and then temporal spell thread and chronocloth bolts. When you recraft, it only uses, it doesn't use any more temple or spell thread, but it does require you to use quantum cloth bolts. Um, if you just crafted it to begin with, with quality three materials, you would have only ever needed to buy three quantum cloth bolts at quality three. If you have to do three recrafts, it's going to cost you two plus two plus two, so six, double the amount of quality three materials just to get yourself back to where you could have been at the beginning if you crafted with quality three in the first place. Um, this is why some people are doing recrafts for people right now and the numbers seem to be all over the place. It's usually indicative of the fact that when that piece of gear was first crafted, it was crafted with basic materials. Um, so this is kind of my advice to you guys out there. If you are looking at getting some pieces of gear crafted, um, Think forward, think forward. It's going to be much, much harder for crafters to recraft and, you know, maybe take that basic bit of gear, turn it into a mythic piece of gear eventually. Um, the best example I can use to showcase of this right now is the Elemental Lariat. Um, this is clearly one of the most sought after pieces of gear in the game right now. Uh, there is lots of work orders outstanding for this. It's very, very few people have the pattern. But what you can often see is some people are smart. Some people are putting in the work orders using quality three materials, but not everybody. Uh, some people are using, some people are choosing to cheap out and they're using only quality two diamonds. This is not a problem now, uh, but it will be a problem in the future that they will have to then use those quality three diamonds if they do want to upgrade this piece of gear later on. Um, and more importantly, they might end up having to use even more diamonds than they would do if they just, you know, got that piece of gear right today. It's a bit of a weird system and it's a little bit difficult to explain. So I hope, please let me know in the comments down below, I hope that helps clarify a few things for you. Materials matter and I would highly recommend people use the best quality materials they can get their hands on when first initially making that piece of gear as it's going to actually save them gold potentially in the long run um, because you have to use even more materials stacked on top, even more than you would have to do to begin with if you have to go through this multiple recraft process to upgrade the quality of the item before you put your primal infusion or your concentrated primal infusion on. Let me know if that was helpful to you though, boys and girls. Um, I've tried recording this video a couple of times and I think that's probably the best version of it. So hopefully that should give you a bit of an indication. Use good quality materials, you'll get some good quality crafts. If you have a customer come to you with a piece of gear, hopefully that will help you explain to them that, hey, maybe before we get you your mythic piece of gear, we're gonna have to recraft this a few times. It's gonna cost you a few more materials. It's gonna cost you a little bit more artisan's metal. 
and more importantly you as a crafter are going to charge a little bit more for that luxury. But if you can go in with all of the knowledge and the understanding of how the system works, hopefully you can you relay that to your customers. Uh, but I'll leave it there. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it boys and girls. Consider subscribing if you're new around here and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.